Hello, we're here with uh, Paul Denier, author of many music books on the subject um, of John Lennon and the Beatles and also the music of London. Paul, I'd like to ask you first of all, um, how, how has the music business changed in the last 10 years? The biggest change in the business of music has been in the, uh, the form of the uh, delivery of music to uh, the people who listen to it. Um, it wasn't that long ago uh, that people listened to all of their music in the form of compact discs, or else obviously through the radio, which is still the case. But if they, if they, if they chose their own music, they would buy compact discs. Uh, before that, they would buy vinyl um, records, LPs, uh, singles. Uh, but but since but since the last uh, ten years, really everything has moved over towards uh, the digital world. So people now either download music uh, uh, through their computers or their various devices, or else, if not downloading, they stream them through um, the various online services that exist, such as uh, Spotify. So the big change within the last 10 years is that music no longer uh, depends upon a physical format like a record or a CD or, or a cassette in the old days. Music is now, for most people, it's a digital uh, product um, which either lives on the computer or else it lives in the cloud, as we now say, it lives online and it doesn't have any physical existence within their own um, within their own room within their own house i see and um has this had any effect on the um the salary of musicians are they getting paid more or less the move of music um online to digital has been very bad for musicians by and large because the very first organisations to make use of the online medium were, by and large, uh, illegal. They were pirates. They were people who enabled listeners to get music without paying for it. And the, the internet makes, uh, makes this very easy. It makes it very easy to hear any music you want without, without having to buy that music. And that is still a big problem for the makers of music and for the, uh, for the uh, music industry. Because, of course, they can no longer make, mu make money, uh, make a profit, uh, earn a living through um, selling music as easily as before. So the last 10 years has been the story, has been the story of the music industry, the music makers, trying to find ways to create a new commerce around charging people money to hear music and that that remains a big a big uh, challenge for all of the um, for the makers of music and those who wish to distribute music with the decrease in the money to be made by musicians would you say this has impacted on the quality of music we're hearing nowadays I don't know whether the, I don't know that the music that the music has suffered in in quality. There is probably a, a great diversity of music being made as um, as there always was, but you no longer have to be making the most popular music in order to get heard, get heard, um, because any kind of music that gets made can always find its own audience because there are many many avenues now between the maker of the music and the audience for that music. So all sorts of music does find uh, an outlet. The problem is that the music companies, the, the record companies, have lost a lot of money. They don't make as much money as they used to, and therefore they cannot invest as much money in the careers of artists as was previously possible. And that has probably, that has probably affected music in a bad way because nowadays unless a record company can make uh, a profit from uh, a musician from an act very quickly 
then they will tend to uh, lose interest and drop them quite quickly. So um, it's a shame. It's it's unfortunate that um, we no longer have record companies that that feel they can afford to invest in a musician for for several years, for five, six, seven years, until that until that musician, until that artist has begun to acquire much more skill than they used to have when they were first starting out. Okay, and finally, Paul, could you tell me, say, three changes that you predict will happen in the music industry in the next 10 years? Nobody really knows how the music industry is going to change. Um, everybody has been completely uh, confused by the, the advent of the uh, internet. I think everybody knew that this was going to change things a lot, but nobody quite knew how much it would change things and in what ways it would change things. But what we are certainly seeing is that um, physical formats like CDs uh, and uh, to some extent vinyl are becoming less and less important. Everything is becoming uh, more and more online. And that affects that affects the the um, the selling of music uh, through shops. That's a big change as well, because people no longer go into shops uh, to anything like the extent that they used to. Um, and because they don't go into shops, they don't see the same choice of music. People used to go into shops to buy one, maybe to buy one thing, but in the course of buying that one thing they would browse through the, uh, the racks and see many other things. They would hear other things being played within the shop and they would perhaps talk to other people, maybe to customers, certainly to the people uh, uh, who were in the staff of the shop and they would learn much more about music than they are doing, uh, than they, than they uh, might do online. Um, so what's, what's being lost is personal interaction. Uh, there are plenty of uh, online um, um, sites where you can learn about music and be advised about music, but they're never quite the same as, um, as personal recommendations. So that's, uh, so that's certainly changed, uh, whether it be for the better or the worse, we'll have to see. Um, but another big change is that because we no longer have uh, physical formats to the same extent, we no longer have uh, the packaging. We no longer have the design which used to accompany uh, any music. We no longer have vinyl LP sleeves or single sleeves. And to a lesser extent, do we have even uh, little um, CD sleeves. Music is uh, an abstract commodity. It has, no, um, it has no object accompanying it. So we lose that entire visual dimension. We no longer have that um, aesthetic uh, aspect to music. Music is just purely abstract. Um, and I think that, that will change our um, perception of music. We can no longer see music through an object. We can see it through videos, but that's not quite the same thing as having one fixed object that we watch while we are listening to the music. So that's changed things quite a lot. Um, whether that will be for the better or the worse, uh, I guess only uh, only time can can tell us. But our ways of interacting with music are certainly changing very dramatically. Paul Denoyer, thank you very much for talking to Best English Language Training. Thank you.